It's only week two and we can walk and stand properly. Our character is also facing in the correct direction when walking and we started building small parts of our level which is blocking our path. Today we are going to talk about physics. While playing a game you don't think about it, but physics often play a huge part. When Mario is jumping, physics tell us how high and how far. When you shoot a gun in Call of Duty, physics determine if you hit an enemy or a car or a wall and I'm sure I don't have to tell you that the game Portal makes heavy use of physics. But even a 2D game like Zelda 3 is using a simplified physics model to determine where our character can go, if there is a collision with an enemy or how fast we fall when we jump off a cliff. Physics simulations have complicated algorithms that have to be solved many times per second, so they can get expensive to calculate very fast. This is the reason why many games have the game running in two different versions. The version you see has a very high quality and tons of effects and polygons on screen. But the physics world is actually a separate simulation with much simpler objects. Many of your favorite characters are actually just a collection of cubes in the physics world, like this picture of a Counter-Strike character shows. The level itself often has a much simpler physics representation as well, in order to make the calculations more efficient. This is also why you sometimes get weird problems in games like invisible walls because the visual representation and the physics world don't match up quite right. Even though our game is quite minimal, we still have an even simpler physics representation for each object and character. These representations are called colliders and they come in a couple of different forms. For 2D games, Unity provides us with box colliders, circle colliders, edge colliders and polygon colliders. These give us enough options to choose from, so each of our objects that needs a collider can be approximated. For example, the bush is represented by a box collider. Even though the bush has many small nooks and crannies, it actually looks good enough if our character simply collides with a box and it's much simpler to calculate. Our character is also represented by a box. But you can see that the box does not surround the whole character, but only the lower part. This is a cool trick to fake some perspective in a top-down game. You can see here, because the collider only surrounds Lung's feet, we can move closer to the obstacles from the bottom, giving the illusion that the character has some height. We are using the same trick for the big trees so we can walk behind them, but setting this up is a little bit more complex. First of all, we need to create a polygon collider for the tree, because the simple box just doesn't look as good. And similar to the character, we leave out a portion of the top part so the character can walk behind the tree. But walking behind means the tree has to be drawn above the character, while the tree has to be drawn below the character when we approach it from the bottom, so our perspective trick from earlier still works. You see that in a 2D game you have to think about in which order your objects are drawn. The ones which get drawn first are in the background, because newer objects get drawn over them. In order for us to have control over which object gets drawn when, Unity provides us with something called sorting layers. Usually you create sorting layers for objects that are in the background, your main objects and sometimes objects that are drawn in the foreground. If you think about platformers, this is pretty easy to determine and you can create some very cool 2D effects simply by creating multiple different background and foreground layers. In the case of our big tree, however, the drawing order changes depending from which direction we approach the tree. We could write some piece of code that checks where the character is relative to the tree and change the sorting order dynamically, but there's a simpler way that doesn't require us to write any code at all. And if you don't write code, you cannot make any mistakes. We split the tree into two different objects. The tree root gets drawn below the character, while the tree top gets drawn above the character. This way we have complete control which part of the tree is obscuring the player. We can also easily align our collider to only surround the bottom half of the tree, so the character isn't blocked by the top half. And that's it for today. This time I even managed to record the live stream and you can watch it on this YouTube channel if you're interested in how we actually implemented these techniques in our game. Or just join us during our next live stream to see what we're doing next. You can get the full source and all the assets we use in this project for free on our Git repository. The link is in the description. Do you like this tutorial and want to support us so we can do more? Share this video with your friends so you can learn how to make games together. And don't forget to subscribe yourself. This episode was written and edited by me, Oliver Ewalei. The music was composed by Robert Taubler and Michael Hassemann, and the graphics for the game were created by Jessica Kara.